Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is a continuation on the series of formula breakdowns to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. Like I've said previously, if you're not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. Now to the challenge at hand, which is challenge 22. We have a list of IP addresses. Some of them are valid, some of them are invalid. But what we're expected to do is to return a list of valid IP addresses. So how do we know which are valid and which are not? Let's look at this. Uh, there are two rules, essentially. That's the first thing. It has to be in the form n1.n2.n3.n4. Okay, so it means there should be three dots, you know, and four elements for now. And then the elements are numbers only. I think there should be more here. Let me expand this. Okay, yes. So... The elements are numbers and then they are greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to five. Okay, so if you look here, you can see that <clears throat> some of them are not valid, like this one. It has four elements, quite all right. They are all numbers, they are all greater than or equal to zero, but you have a 285 there. That's what makes it invalid. So, how do we proceed? So, this is what we expect to get as our answer. So, let me just go to a new sheet and then just walk you through you know my idea which i think is very simple the first thing i will do is to split the text using a dot as the delimiter okay so i'm going to do a text split right and i'm going to take this and i'm going to say split it using a dot okay now it's going to give me you know four elements once i have these four elements i can then do all the tests i want to do one is that i want to be sure that there are four the next thing is I want to be sure that all of them are greater than or equals to zero. And lastly, they are less than or equals to 25. So I know I'm going to, you know, perform a couple of operations using this same text split. So I will make this a variable. I can make this A. Okay. So anywhere you see A, it means I'm referring to this result we have there. So there are a few things I need to test. And if you want all of them to return true or test if all of them return true, the easiest function to use is an AND function. So I can use the AND function. And what will be the first thing? I want to test that, you know, first of all, there are four elements. So I can use a count A and say count A of A, right? A is the result you're seeing on the screen here after the split. Okay, so how many are they, right? So I want to test that count of A of that A is equals to four. That's the first thing to ensure that N1, N2, N3, N4. The next thing I want to be sure of is that, you know, A, the number is greater than equals to zero. That's one. And then the last one is that A is less than or equals to 255. So this is supposed to be it, right? I close the AND, right? And then I close the LET. And I would see an answer that surprises me. Okay? It gives me a false. But I know this is valid, right? Because there are four digits. One, two, three, four. Right? All of them are greater than zero. And they are also less than 255. Greater than or equal to, right? So what's the issue here? The issue is with the text split. When you do a text split, a text split gives you text. Okay? So what you are doing here, where you are comparing and saying A is greater than or equal to zero, you are comparing numbers with text. And that's not going to work. So what you want to do, first of all, here, is to make sure that maybe the result of the text split, you know, are numeric. It's going to have some issues, right? Because you can see that some of them have, you know, text in there. But it's to force it, you know, to be numeric. So you can perform a mathematical operation. I may use the double unary. Okay? Right? You see that now it's true. Now let's take this down, you know, just for all the rows we see here. Um, the truths are fine, you know, they are where they should be. The only problem we have is whenever one of the elements maybe gives us a text, for example, right? You know, then if you are trying to convert a text that is an actual text to a number, then you are going to have, you know, an error. That's the only issue, you know, that we have, you know, here. But let's see how we can fix that. We could put maybe, you know, like an if error around it. Okay, so we could put maybe an if error around it, right? Okay, and let's take this down and let's see if that fixes the problem. Okay, so, well, it gives us zeros, right? And zeros are forces, so <laughs> we are still fine. Good. So once we have this, now we have everything we want. The only thing we want to do is that if you feed this now into your filter, it's like more or less like saying filter all these, right, where these are either true or false. So the filter, we only pick up the truths, 
you know, and ignore the false and zero. So I'm fine, you know, with this axis. But like I said in other videos, there's been a shift. It's not compulsory and it's not even a requirement for these challenges for you to have a formula that sits in one cell and spills. But that's how I tend to write my formulas these days. So it sits in one cell and it spills to the other cells. So what I'm going to do is rather than have it the way I have now that I drag down, I'm going to delete every other thing and I'm just going to work in one cell. So what I want to be able to do is generate the true false, true false for this entire, you know, range in just one cell. That's where the map function comes in. And I've explained this a couple of times. But basically what you're saying is the expression you have in front of you is a transformation. So you are going to feed the map with an array and then it's going to apply this transformation to it and it's going to apply it to every element in that array. So meaning that if you feed it with this entire range, it's going to perform this transformation here on each of those elements and return the results that way. That's really what the map does. So let me pull this up here so you see. So I'm going to pull a map. The first thing the map needs is an array. I will just feed it with the entire range here. Okay, good. Now I pull up a lambda and you need a variable which is simply the way I think of it, like I always say, it's like an iterator, right? So this variable is going to go from element to element of this array and perform this calculation that you have in front there. But you can see that our calculation here still references A2. But now since X would pick up A2, then pick up A3, pick up A4 all the way to A12, then we don't need to have A2 here. Just change this A2 to X. So that at every step of the calculation, it knows what to reference. So once you have that, we can then close here the lambda. We can close the map. Okay. Now you can see our result. So this is our result. We can now feed this into the filter function and say filter these IP addresses based on this true false. I'm not bothered with zero because I know zero is false. So I'm just going to do here filter and I'm going to give it the same range and then it's going to use this as the include criteria. Okay, so you close the bracket and then you press enter. And you see that we have the results that we need. Okay, so if any of these ones here, you know, become valid, they would also be added to the list. So let's assume I change this to 128.0.234.35. Okay, so you can see it gets added. So that's really how these formulas are written these days, where the formula sits in one cell and it then spills, you know, to the other cells in such a way that if anything changes in the source, then the result also changes. So I hope you enjoyed this video relatively simple one you know if you did enjoy it please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out